No. Okay, so Gabriel had sent me this file. Um, how do you explode these legs along the axes instead of having to do it step by step? Um, so the first thing I did was go to my my visualization of the axes, temporary axes, um, which you just have to make sure it's on because if it's grayed out, then it's not on. And see, you can't do anything. If it's not grayed out, then it is on. So select the axes, then go to your exploded view. Select one of the legs, and then this one with the little arrows, select inside there and select one of the, the axes. And then you can drag the leg out, and you can specify how far out it must go. So 100, done. And then we'll do the next one. Connect that axis. Drag it out. Type in 100. Done. And so forth. Okay, so we'll just do the last one. Right, so now if you have a look at this from one of the views, you can see these are Perfectly lined up. Okay. Ah, okay. Let's continue with what I was showing you, or let's hopefully continue that. So here's my assembly file. Take those axes off and show the component. Um, okay, so I, I, I just want to see, I might have a, no, I don't. I'm going to have to do a quick exploded view. Um, right, if that happens to you, if you hit the wrong button, and your exploded view disappears, you can find a chair under configurations. And if you right click it, you say edit feature so that everything's done in one in one place. So let's just pull that down. Um, and pull this one down. Say done. Pull this out a little bit. Say done. And once you're happy with everything, you say, okay, okay. So if I'm not happy with anything, I just go back in here. Select one of the steps. So let's say this first step. Um, and I can even, if I want to, deselect one of these items from a step. back into this um that come up here okay so uh what i wanted to show you and uh, you probably know about it already but um you can save a view if you if there's a view that you like that, that you've you've um manipulated your view and let's say this is the view that you like just like this then you hit the tab the space button and you'll get your orientations. So here I can I can go to the second button and say new view. Um, I'm just going to delete that view because I want to use that view again. So I'm going to say new view, and then just give the view a name. So I'm going to say exploded VA. So what that will do is. Um, it'll it'll save that view for you. So if I go back into this one and I select that view, it'll it'll reestablish the view that I liked or that I needed. Um, and this is going to be important for the next step. So I'm going to say from here, file, make assembly from no, that's the wrong one. Make drawing. Um, are you recording, Phil? Uh, it should be. Let's just make sure. Yes, it's recording. Cool. 
Perfect. So I, just just check. No, it's fine. I set it up that it records automatically um, via Zoom, not my other program. Okay, so I'm now selecting one of my um, standard templates, which if you don't have, please tell me. Um, I'll make sure they're posted again. But you really do need to use this, this one. All right, so I get my um, view palettes on the right-hand side. I can select any one of these, but I can. you can see that the view that I created is, is already um, created for me. I can drag this in. Uh, and at the moment, I don't like all those origin points. I'm going to switch them off. Um, and you can see here, I can actually decide that I don't want this to be an exploded view by clicking this button on the left-hand side. And I don't need to choose the view that I've created. Um, I can choose another view. Sorry, Phil. Yes. I just wanted to ask, um, last year when we were doing engineering with Oratile and we did yeah. the exploded views, she wanted, uh, she didn't want like the parts to overlap and she wanted it to be like spaced out nicely. So with you teaching us this year, um, what do you prefer or how should we, how should we have it like laid out on the page? Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I guess if you, yeah, you should try and make it as visible as possible. So maybe I think that's why she was saying they shouldn't overlap. I personally, I quite like them overlapping as long as you're not hiding significant parts of them. So, okay, so it's up you. to you. I, I, you, know, I, you guys are designers. I'm going to look at it and say, are you thinking like a designer? Are you showing everything? So, yeah, maybe, maybe okay. my view at the moment isn't um, optimal because it's not showing all the details. But that's all I'm looking for, just, just clear communication. And I would suspect thank you. that's why. Is that okay? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay. Um, right, so I've got my view selected. Um, the drawing view dialog box on the left-hand side. I can go to use custom scale. Now, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, there were, there were set scales that you could use, and they are all in here. And you are not allowed to deviate from them. Um, I am overjoyed that... The standard now is that you can select any scale you want. So I've chosen three to one, which is not a, you weren't allowed to use that according to any of the uh, standards 25 years ago. Now you can, as far as I can see. So there, there's my exploded view. Um, and now I want to be able to describe each one of these parts. So with that view selected, I'm going to go to uh, annotation and tables, and I'm going to select bill of materials. Okay, short sh bomb is a short word, B-O-M. All right, so it's going to ask me which view I want to, to get the, the bomb from, and it's this view here. Um, and you can decide here what type of um, display you want. Top level only, parts only. Don't worry about that for now. Um, so I'd leave all of this standard for now. We're not going to worry too much about it. If you, we can go into more detail later. The moment you click OK, you'll get this table, which you can place. You can either get it to locate at a certain point or pull it out. I like it to be slightly out. It doesn't really matter. Um, and this will capture all the parts that are in your... Uh, in your assembly. Um, so with, with item numbers. So a little bit about this is if you um, click on one of these, these spaces, you'll always get this uh, manipulation, this text manipulation dialog box where you can increase or decrease the, si the size. You can put in a formula. Um, you can decide how it's spaced. Um, you can put things to the left or to the middle or to the right. Um, I'm not going to go through all of this right now. These things like descriptions, this can be entered in in your in your um, in your actual part file. Uh, we won't have time to do that now. But at the moment, if you double click on this, um, it will give you a little message saying do you want to keep link or not. I just keep them, and you can describe what it is that you want 
this to be. So this is going to be from ABS, and it's going to be injection molded. Normally, I just type in um, the material and the finish. Um, I don't put in what, what the no, – I would actually add in another part to the table. So you can actually, if you go in here, you can insert column to the right, and then I can drag this across. I can put a new header in here, so I can say process. And then I can describe. So this is a table describing to the manufacturer where, what each part is. Um, one of the ones you might want to use here is, is reference files. So um, put in another column here and make it, in fact, let's just make this one here. So I could then go and find the, the name of that file and put it in here and, and so that you'd be cross-referencing everything. And then the quantity at the end. Okay, so that's all, that should be self-explanatory, but I'm gonna, you're gonna need to do this for me for this exercise. And the next thing you're gonna need to do for me is to auto balloon this. Um, so go to annotation and you'll see auto balloon. Um, you'll see straight away it puts the balloons in, in the arrangement you are either last selected or, it, or the program thinks is optimal. But if you have a look on the left hand side, you can decide what kind of pattern you want. So you can go from the top, all at the top, or all at the bottom, all to the left, all to the right, or you can do a radial one. So I want mine to go all to the right. Um, you've got instances here where you can ignore multiple, I mean, buttons here where you can ignore multiple instances. So if you've got a whole lot of screws, you don't want to go label each one. You just want one of them. And then you can either insert or not insert the magnetic lines. I always leave it in. And then the faces or edges, you can make the leaders either go to a face or to, a, to an edge. So um, in this case, I think it's going to be nicer to go to a face. And here you can decide on the balloon settings. You don't have to have circular. You can have any, any shape you want. So this triangular or hexagon. Um, Leave it circular. And then how many characters do you want? Two is normally fine because zero, zero, or zero, one, zero, two, up to, uh, you know, if you're doing thousands of parts, then you do want three characters or four characters. Um, and then you can change the leader style if you want. You can decide you want something else, like you want a, a dashed line like that. And you can change the thickness. Obviously, is going to be crazy. We don't want that. We want it to be nice and thin. Um, and then you can use layers as well. We're not going to do layers. So once it's in place, you say OK. And then anytime you want, if you click on any of these balloons, you can grab the end of the magnet line and drag it around to place it elsewhere. You can shorten these things. And let's say I don't want four, I don't want these two crossing. I want four to go above one. I can just grab the four, and I can leave it either outside of the magnet line or or place it back in. Okay, so I'm going <coughs> to quickly drag that one. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, right, and that's that's that that bit done. I mean, it's just a matter of filling out your um, your files, uh, and then saving it, of course. So I always save my, my sheet views in a different folder. Okay, any questions about that? All of we got you, just five of us. John, Sipo, Thurston, and Gabriel. So, not popular today. Right, I want to... Sorry, Phil. No, it's fine. I just wanted to ask, like when you said with... Sorry, Phil. Uh, with like changing the dashed line, 
while changing the line to like dashes and stuff, uh, would yeah. it be okay to do that? Or do you prefer us just having like a solid line? Or is it like up to us? As long as it like is, as long as you can read it and see what's happening. As long as I can read it. Um, yeah, I don't mind. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, I, I, personally, uh, the standard is to, use a, is to use a straight line. Um, so I, I wouldn't mess with it too much. You know, this is not, this subject isn't about individuality. This is about describing the product you've made. So, um, okay. no. But I, I, it's, I'm just showing it to you because you might go to another, uh, you know, you might work for a firm afterwards. It has certain standards. So you need to know where those things are. But I, I'm not going to worry. It's fine. You, know, you can do what you want. But don't make it. Uh, thank time. you very much. Okay. All right. So I want to quickly hop into the button to show you how to dimension that. So I'm going to close this one. Now here's my button, and this is the one you're going to now um, dimension for me, as well as the application. So I thought this would be easier to quickly demonstrate how to um, dimension it. So I'm going to say that make drawing from part. I'm going to select A3. Your view palette on the left-hand side um, gives you a top view. You know, all the views that you want. Um, I'm going to choose bottom view or annotation view. Um, get rid of those. And then I want to scale this up to 2.2 2 to 1 at least. 2 to 1. And now I do need some views from here, so I need a projected view. Um, I don't really need this this view because I've got the same view. This thing is, is symmetrical. So I just want to grab the bottom view. Okay, so I can delete the one that I don't want. Um, this might actually benefit from being scaled up even larger. Let's see. Three, two, one. Ooh, and you see, it, it hasn't done this one because I've broken the link. So that's a separate view. Um, so the first thing I want to show is my center line. So I'm going to go to center line and I'm going to select, um, it should be able to select view. Let's see if it will do it this time. It's done it, but it's tiny. That's okay. Um, so it's giving me a center line in both of these views. I don't know if you can see if I zoom in a bit. There's a, there's a center line, but it's very, very short. That's okay. And then let's see if we put one in this one. Ah, okay, that's a bit better. The great thing about these center lines is you can just drag them. Okay, so I've got my center lines in place and I want this one to be dragged all the way across. Oh. Right, so something, something weird is happening here. This button is skewed. Okay, so it's obviously something I've done in the model, which isn't correct, um, the way I placed this. Now, I'm not going to be able to fix that now. I know how to do it, but it's not going to be worth it. Um, this, this has to do with something to do with the way I've actually created the, the model. Um, what I want to show you is these two lines, the center line, that one there and that one there, those should be your A and B datums. So when you go to datum feature, that should be your A and that should be your B. And then C should be, well actually, no, A should be this bottom line here. Uh, 
Um, that's because that's if you were to injection mold this, that's the that's the place that you'd start machining from. If you can picture that there'd be a mold, one big mold on this side and another on that side. So that would be your your um, your primary datum. Put the last datum in, which would be this one. Okay, so anytime you dimension across a datum, you always dimension only once, um, and that's across the dimension. So in this case, you need to be very careful that you select the very lowest, the very outermost um, edges, because if you do it from a distance, um, it's easy to pick the wrong line. Now, I know that this is 16, and one of the principles of dimensioning is that you give the fewest dimensions possible with the greatest amount of information. So I'm not going to do this dimension as well. I'm not going to put in, just put it in inaccurately. So you see there, I've chosen it incorrectly. So just watch this. I, I'm going to check straight away. If I see that it's uh, that dimension is 15.9 point, that's 16, and this both thing's supposed to be square. You haven't chosen your dimensions correctly. So that's going to earn you my ire. I want this to describe that shape um, more more completely, so I'm going to go to this little button, and I'm just going to put in SQ, which stands for square in capitals, please, always in capitals. So that's all I need to, to describe the shape of this thing. Um, when it comes to the, the, the button intersecting with the, the base, you're going to need a section view. So I'm going to go to annotation. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, view layout. Section view. So you can either do it there or there. Um, go that way. So it says, which, which parts of the rib do you want to exclude? In this case, because it's not interfering with anything, I'm not going to worry. But that's a principle of, um, of sectioning. So let's just do that again. Let's go to section view. Um, and let's just go to a horizontal one and put it in the middle. Now, you don't want to section through that rib because that's going to give you like one big blank piece. Let's do it. You can see that that's giving me one big blank piece, and that's not what you want. So we're going to go back to this and say, uh, if I can find it. Start again, section view. All right, so rib features. So I'm not sure if you can select it from here. I think you have to actually go into the drawing view that you're in which in this case I'm hoping is this one. Yes. So it's this rib here, which we don't want section. And there we go. Quickly see if I can't get this to align, break alignment. So if that's in the way, you can break alignment and you can drag your section view across to somewhere else. <clears throat> okay, but it, that, I was just showing you that just to show you how to avoid sectioning through a rib. If you if the section line goes across it in a transverse or longitudinal fashion. So there's two words to learn here. One's transverse and one's longitudinal. Um, I'll put those up in my might when I edit this, just to explain those two views. Transverse goes across, trans mean across and verse, transverse, and then longitudinal along in the same direction as. Okay, so I've got one dimension. Uh, the series, so this is not going to work nicely because this item is not lined up nicely. Let's see if I can rotate this. Go to rotate view. Okay. 
the other way. Minus one. I'm just going to use the um, This is all five. Half a degree. Fly closed. So I've actually righted this view. I don't know if it's going to like what I've done there. Ah, it seems it does. So I, what I want here is I want an intersection between this plane here and that plane there. I go to sketch. Once I've selected both of those um, lines and I put a point in, and you can see here it's got this, this point. Um, not sure if that's clear to you. I'll do it again. So I'm going to select the outer line of the, uh, the circle of the cylinder and then this flat line. And I'm going to, uh, let's shift select so that I've got them both selected. Put the point in. I have explained this before, but it's, it's a super useful. So now I can, I can dimension that diameter <coughs> properly. Okay, if you're having tr trouble selecting this point, uh, so I figured out how best to select these uh, virtual shops. Um, if I go to dimension, all you need to do is mouse over the feature. So in this case, the, um, the little radius, and you'll see a little point appearing. So select that and then mouse over the next one. You'll see a little point and you'll get your dimension. Now, of course, that, that's not a dimension that I want. Let's just do that again to demonstrate. So it's this one here. Uh, our mouse over, you'll see the little, little star appearing. Mouse over, star, and there it is. And that must be a diameter. So I just put in in the in front there, diameter, and it's done. Okay. Um, then the other thing is just don't don't forget, please, to put in the center lines of your the center line marks. So go to annotation, uh, note, insert in here and uh, add symbol, center line mark. Just take off the um, auto leader. It's that one there. Yes, one in. I think you can just copy it. I don't know, it'll stay. It'll stay active until you've placed it a few places. So, click, 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 and then I think it's his, once you've done that the last time, escape. So make sure your center line marks are in there. And then just a note here: you don't need the second section view. So we're going to delete that. Um, you don't have more views than you need. And then here's just the um, definition of transverse and longitudinal for you. Um, see, because if I try and if I try and dimension any of these lines, none of these lines reflect. Go back to this one. None of these refl lines reflect what the circle is at the point at which it intersects. Uh, if that makes sense to you. So this is the only accurate way of depicting, if I were going to tool this, where, how would I start tooling it? I'd have to select the intersection between the flat and that line there to get the starting diameter. And then, and then from here, I can then put in an angle. So two short things that I want to show you here. Um, first of all, that the section view should be scaled up. Um, while you've got a section view, you may as well scale it up. Just makes things easier to dimension and to see. And then the second one is um, this angle dimension. All it needs is a note. So I'm going to go to, uh, not in there, annotation, note, um, select that line. Type in taper or three degree taper. Let's just go three. Select the symbol, degree, and then space taper. And that's it. Don't need to have um, an angle other than that. And that describes what you need.
if you go from those two points, put in a, a point of intersection so that you can now dimension from that line or that point to, and we're going to have to select the points again and the intersection of the two. So a little bit tricky. Somehow my dimension has disappeared. I, the tool doesn't want to be play ball. Okay, I, I think you get you get the idea. It is going to be. A, I would then scale this up a lot, and then I'd also make sure that these these are the. I change the way that these work. Remember that you can do that in the options dialog box. Mm -hmm. It should be correct already. So it's virtual snaps witness um find dot for a change and see if that does anything okay there we go that's a fair bit easier so in this case um a dot although that dot is far too big but i should now be able to select that to that to give me the starting height Any questions about this? So I'm looking for accuracy in the way in which you um, you dimension this thing in a way which is intelligent. So for instance, this, this radius here creates a problem as well. So we're going to have to do the same thing again at the risk of being, of sounding, no, in fact, we don't have to. Um, yeah, what we can do is we can dimension Oh, we do. We actually have to put in a point from there to there, and again from there to there. I mentioned that. Doesn't want to grab it. I think it's my computer. There we go. Okay, looks like the trick is you got to find where the where the intersection actually actually come on actually intersects. So from there to there, there we go, three point zero nine. So that'll have to be a diameter as well. And then you can dimension um, from this point all right I'm sorry about this being so slow it just seems to be the computer as well so from that point to that that point there make sure it's straight And then just type in here at root. At. All right, and if your dimensions look messy like this, you should be able to auto arrange them. So just select them, right click. Um, auto arrange and they'll put them from smallest to, to largest for you. So it's very easy to do that sort of thing. And that's about it. Um, the rest is easy, I think. With a wall thickness, you're going to specify a wall thickness of 0.9. So there's actually not a lot to do. So if you've been in this lecture and you've watched what I've done here, um, other than things that I haven't put in, like heights from there to there, and edge radii, um, there's really not an awful lot to do. 
Uh, and sorry, yeah, this <laughs> you are going to have to put in center lines for these. So, any questions about this? Just to show you how to put in a center line for that one. Okay, so select center line and then just select the two lines that you want the center line to go to. And that will give you the ability to dimension um, this angle. Degrees, and you would not dimension all three angles. You would just say 120 degrees. Um, there is a convention here, but I can't remember what it is. But if you just type 10 times 3, that would cover it. Okay, so the goal is the fewest dimensions possible um, in the right place, showing the right thing. And then fill out your type of block. And that's all that we need to deal with for today. Let me just check to make sure. Can you all see this PDF? Yep, we can. Right, so I will just check through here. Um, okay, all oh, right. So, yeah, maybe let's just go through this quickly. So the 66% rule is a rule in injection molding in which you try not to make any ribs be larger than two thirds of the wall thickness. So in this case, my wall thickness is two, two millimeters. So if I do two times 0.66, I get to 1.32 millimeters. And that's at the point at which they would theoretically intersect. Now, ideally, in fact, it should be smaller than that because if your fillet is, is quite large, you can see that the circle occupied by this area gets larger. And if that area there, which you can see here is a, that's got a two millimeter rib and a two millimeter wall, if that area there gets too big, then what happens is when the plastic cools, um, the cooling rate in the center is slower than at in the ends. And that means that this rib is going to pull a mark upwards or away from that face, and you're going to get a sink mark. You'll all have seen sink marks if you look at plastic parts, especially cheap ones. Look on the outside, you'll see little little sort of um, depressions on the outside that don't look nice. So that's that's how you you avoid getting um, sink marks. And that does cover it, I think. Any questions? So I think our session's about to, about to end. No questions. So I'll bid you all goodbye. And we'll get to work next week. And if you need help. Thank you. If you need help, send, send please, if you do need help, send stuff that I can work with. Um, screenshots, files, something I can look at. So I can